G'day everyone and welcome to Chris Franken's Music Crush. Just another listening video. I'm going to be featuring two absolute all-time great metal albums. Um, one of them is actually in my top five metal albums of all time and the other one is is somewhere near about. It's just absolutely both fantastic albums. Got some new releases for you. We've got a, a, a very underrated prog album by a great prog band but this album doesn't really get as much credit as it should plus one of the best Gaelic metal albums of all time in my opinion of quite a, a recent recent album um, that uh, I just played so much ever since it came out I had it since almost day one but yeah uh, some of the new releases that I've loved that came out on Friday the new Crypta album which is basically ex-members of Nervosa Burning Witches. Um, and uh, if you like those two bands, you'll love this album. So good. Echoes of Souls from Memory, I think it's called. So, so good. Just brilliant. Uh, the new Eremit album, a traditional Doom album. Just love it. If you get a chance to look at the artwork, when you see the artwork, you'll know what you're going to get. Um, over what is it, about 65, 66 minutes, something like that long, and there's only three songs on there. So if you like long songs, definitely for you. But really good album, love it to bits. The new Hammer King album, excellent. Um, probably the best that they've done so far, in my opinion, I think. Um, the new Witch Cross album is really good. King Buffalo, fantastic prog. Really, really good prog album. And uh, the new Flotsam and Jetsam album, I love, actually. I love it quite a lot more than the, the last one. Uh, Blood in the Water, it's got that great album cover and um, yeah, really good strong album from there. And the new Ma Mammoth, WVH, the Wolfgang Van Halen album, really good actually, really, really good, quite crunchy and uh, catchy and yeah, excellent album, really good. And there's a new album out by uh, uh, an outfit called uh, Living Dead Girl, uh, and the album's called Exorcism and it's, um, it's, Interesting album. Uh, at, up front, I was a bit, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but I, every album I listen to that's new, I always go in with an open mind. And uh, at times it's heavy and, and abrasive and, and, and good metal, and other times it's, it's almost like pop music. It's, uh, but a really catchy and interesting album. Fantastic. So some really good new releases this week, that's for sure. Um, so we'll get on to what I've been listening to. And I'm going to start off... Um, I had this on CD, well I've got this, all this band's collection on CD, in fact I'm probably going to do them as the next ranking video, I was having a look at the, the sort of next four or five bands I'm going to do as a ranking video and I think I'm going to do them next, um, they are one of my all time favourite bands, no doubt about it, um, and this album is a masterpiece, it's it's easily one of the best of its subgenres, and as I say it's I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy to put it at number five in my top metal albums of all time. It's a masterpiece. It's perfection, uh, and let me show it to you. So, uh, I, as I say, I've had I've got the whole band's discography on CD, and I saw this come out as a reissue last year, a double LP, and I just. I, I could not resist it. Um, I don't normally do but double ups. Every now and then, if it's something very special or, you know, I might do. But this, I just could not refuse. Now, the band I'm talking about is Between the Buried and Me. I've shown one of their albums before, Alaska. So they're a progressive death metal band, technical death metal band from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, the best way to describe this band is... If King Crimson did death metal, I think that's the best way I can describe it. That's probably the closest. Yeah, King Crimson, Camel, and Yes, if they did death metal, that would be the the best way. But this band, you know, it's not just brutality. There's parts of their songs that have little jazzy sections and little intricate, quite avant-garde at times as well. Um, last few albums have sort of a little bit they quite often get compared to Opeth a little bit not that they're the same as Opeth but they quite often get they seem to have almost had a similar path although Opeth were a little bit more on the, the, the black metal side early on 
Uh, whereas Between the Buried and Me have always been death metal. Um, but in, in recent years, like Opeth, they've sort of become more, a lot more of their material is progressive rock. Uh, Tommy Rogers, the vocalist, uh, he's always had clean vocals in with his death growls, but like Opeth and like Michael Ackerfeld, starting to just sort of do more and more clean vocals in the songs, and the songs are a little bit more less reliant on, on heaviness and more of the progressive rock side. Um, but I love this band. I've seen them every time they've been to Perth. They've been absolutely flawless every time. One time I saw them, they did a, one of their albums in its entirety, which was a big 70 minute album. They did it spotlessly all the way through in its entirety. Um, yeah, so Between the Buried and Me, and I will, I think I'm gonna do their, their ranking the albums probably next. I think that one's all ready to go. One, because their discography is not quite as long as some others, so I'm, I should have a little, be able to squeeze it into my work schedule at the moment to do it. But I have got a lot of, I haven't forgotten, I've got Vader coming up. I've got, I'm gonna do Christian, the Brazilian death metal band. Uh, probably gonna do a Creator ranking. I'm gonna do a Camel. Although Camel, uh, I'm gonna do, I don't have about three or four of their most recent albums, but that's okay. I'm still gonna do a, a rankings of the album. Um, I've got everything in the, the, the 70s and early 80s, so I'll probably do them. Yeah, I've got lots lots of ranking videos coming. I'm gonna do a Voivod one, I keep promising that. Um, that's a long one and a big one, and I may even have a guest for that. I'll see how I go, I'm not sure about that, but anyway. So, that was a long way of coming around to showing this album, wasn't it? So, here we go, this is probably number five. I'm pretty comfortable with this being number five on my all-time metal albums list. Between the Buried and Me, Colours, this came out in 2007 and it's an absolute masterpiece. Interesting thing about this band, and they've always been like this, even the, the other album that I showed you in a recent video, Alaska, by looking at them, you would never know what this band is all about. That does not look like a progressive death metal or a technical death metal album, I realize that. This is my favorite of theirs. Uh, probably the next after, well, no, I won't tell you actually. I should keep that hidden, shouldn't I? Because I'm gonna do a, uh, a rankings video by them um, but this is definitely my favorite of theirs and uh, but I love all their catalog there's there's not one album that would be below sort of 8 out of 10 that's for sure um, an absolute masterpiece so the first the first track is a bit of an intro sort of a track but the next two the, so the first two actual real songs on this album is probably my one of my all-time favorite starts to an album they are brilliant they're heavy the riffs are incredible uh, the decade of statues no sorry informal gluttony which is um, the third track on the album but the the second of those first two real songs has this wonderful sort of Egyptian sort of I don't know hard to describe like a like a chant sort of thing and this incredible guitar that sounds like it's from Egypt. I don't really know what that means, but if you hear it, you'll know what I mean. And then it just comes in with this full, heavy everything. Uh, they Just an incredible band. And the music always sounds full. It's never lean. It's always lush and decadent. But, um, you know, when they're brutal, they are brutal. There's no doubt about it. Just because there's not all blood and guts and gore on the front here, that doesn't mean that this band doesn't go cheap on the brutality. They, they have some really heavy stuff. Every bit as heavy as immolation, suffocation, um, morbid angel, all of that, every bit. But it's the progressiveness and the avant-garde and the technical now they're certainly not the widdly diddly technical death metal, which I'll be honest, I do I do love a lot of technical death metal, but um, all their songs have a point and a reason, and it's very much more about the progressive background. So as I said, think of all of the big 70s prog rock bands. This band and this album is all that stuff put into a crushingly heavy death metal uh, arena. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. 
The songwriting is like 1970s prog rock. The feel of it, the quirkiness of it is all of that, but put into a 90s, 2000s, um, very well produced, very well executed death metal album. Um, everything on this is amazing. Ants of the Sky, uh, prequel to the sequel is incredible. And then it finishes off with a big masterpiece at the end, White Walls, which I know a lot of people, that's their favourite Between the Buried and Me song of all time. I don't know if I could pick one Between the Buried and Me song. The only one that might do it could be Swim to the Moon on the album that came after this, which is perfection. But this album is absolutely flawless. Every, not just every single note on this is perfect in every single way. I, uh, I absolutely adore. 64 minutes long, so it's quite long. Um, but, you know, it's a prog. It's a prog album, so if you... Uh, Let's face it, if you're going to like prog, you can't like short albums. They don't really go hand in hand. Not much of a label, not really much to look at. As I say, it is a double LP. Um, but yeah, Between the Buried and Me, Colours 2007, number five of my all-time favourite metal albums. Absolutely perfection. I've listened, you know what, since 2007, except for one album by Enslaved, probably, uh, this is probably my most listened to album, I would say, since 2007, since this came out. Fell in love with this band on the second album, and ever since then I've, I've had it, got every single album on the day of its release. This one I got the CD on its release, and uh, but yeah, since 2007, easily would be the most listened, well, probably a draw with an, another album of my most listened to album since 2007. Now, I'm sure some of you know this album very well. So, uh, Cult Metal Classics, or and then the, the, the website Sonic, Sonic Age Records did a reissue of this back in April. I've been wanting a physical copy of this record for a very, very long time. I've always just been looking out and looking out, always extremely expensive. And then, yeah, the reissue was put out in the end of April. I jumped on it and... Uh, yeah, I, I got it just recently and haven't stopped playing it. My One of my very good friend's brothers had this back in the 80s, uh, well, 85, when not long after it came out. Yeah, end of... No, I might have even been 86. I'm just trying to think where I was. Yeah, yeah, I was in year seven in primary school, so it might have been 86 when he had this. Um, loved it then. Just thought that they were way ahead of their time. A, a, just a fantastic blend of and now even though they're from Chicago it's a fantastic in my opinion it's a fantastic blend of new wave of British heavy metal and progressive metal so if you don't know this album I, I this is the way I would describe it and I'm gonna list a few bands here and I don't normally do for for fans of but this will help think of Iron Maiden Power Slave Iron Maiden Seventh Son mixed with a little bit of Megadeth, but not much, mixed with um, Merciful Fate, Fate's Warning, Spectre Within era, and even though it would be a lot later, um, there's also, I think, Voivod, Killing Technology, Dimension, Hartross, and Nothing Face. You think of all those sounds, and if that's what you like the sound of, then you would love this album, absolutely love it to bits plays brilliantly cult metal classics i mean just what a what a group they are look at that so there's the, the wonderful vinyl now here's another way that you know that this, this album is absolutely brilliant because uh the metal theologian Shout out to Aaron the Middle Theologian. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, then I don't know what you're doing because his channel is the best in the VC and just brilliant. Yes, he's a great friend, so it might be a little bit biased that I'm saying that, but I, it truly is. So, you know how you know this is a great album? is because there is no moustaches on the back here and he still gives it 10 out of 10. So... There you go. What does that tell you? 
lack of mustaches and it still gets a, a 10 out of 10 from the metal theologian. So you know everything about this album must be just brilliant. Charlotte is brilliant. Uh, Black Rose and Thorns, Mother Motherfucker has the, just a great chugging riff and the stage, absolutely love the stage. There's nothing, nothing less than 10 out of 10 on this album. Absolutely adore everything about it. Um, comes out with, I will show it actually, because I really like this sort of thing. It um, came with this inside, so that's really good. Especially for a band that sort of didn't get much publicity or exposure. They did have another album that came after this one, which, yeah, good luck getting that. I'd love to have it, but yeah. But it's really good when a band like this that sort of didn't have as much publicity, um, you get to see what they were like, you get to read a little bit about them. Um, it's got all the lyrics and everything. So it's cult metal classics, um, which you get through the... Depends on where you are, I think, but I, I tend to go through the Sonic Age Records website for cult metal classics. Um, just so good. You can see on the back there, uh, where is it, 1985, and then there's the reissue, 2021. So, incredible band from Chicago. One of the best metal albums of the 80s, hands down, in my opinion. It's It's just... You know what's amazing about that album is because it, it came out in 1985, but for some reason, I don't know why, it, it seems to embody kind of everything I loved about almost every 80s metal bands. And, and I'm not saying that they, they stole from then, obviously not, because that came out in 1985. And things that you hear in this album, you actually hear in bands much later on, you know, um, a, a lot of them. But it's funny, when I listen to that album, and, and now when we're obviously a long way past in the 80s, and I grew up in the 80s, I mean, I was a massive metalhead from 1979 in, into the 80s. But when I listen to that now and then listen back to everything that I was listening to in the 80s, it's weird, it's almost like a summary of, of, of many of the different styles that were very common in the 80s which is amazing. As I say, it came out in 1985. It, if it came out in 1990, you go, you'd go, well, okay, they're, they've heard everything and that's influenced their music. But I don't know. They, I think they've, uh, they probably influenced a lot of bands coming later on. If they heard it, obviously, there's no internet back then. So it's not, you can't assume that they would have been heard by other bands that had that sound later on. But yeah, it's just that it just feels, to, when I put it on, I go, wow, this is the perfect, album if someone like asked me what was 1980s metal was like put that record on and it kind of summarizes it all in the most perfect way love it absolutely love that album so much next i've been playing this one so this is the gaelic metal album that i was talking about of course this is anna murphy's band after she left elo vitae elo, elo vitae i'm not sure how you quite say that band elo vitae i really quite liked but never completely loved i don't know why great folk metal band that they are, and I do like them very, very much, but I'm, I don't think, no, I'm pretty sure I've never even bought one of their albums, but I just, I like them a lot. Then she left, she started this band called Cellar Darling. The first album I really liked a lot. Then this, I heard one track of this album and I bought it instantly. Now her voice is beautiful. I think it's one of the best Gaelic voices I've ever heard, not just in metal, just all around. You know, um, it's just, if you want a comparison of her voice, um, very much like Alison Krauss, just just melts you. It's fantastic, but it's got a bit of that, because she's mixed, she's um, Swiss and Irish. I'm pretty sure it was her dad, well it must be, because her name is Murphy, so her dad was the Irish part of it, but she was born and raised in Switzerland, I think. Um, and it just the voice has the, the the beauty to it, but it just has that little bit of Gaelic uh, tinge to it. I want to say it just sounds a bit different. Like she could be singing uh, up the front of chieftain songs or things like that. She's just her voice is just magnificent. I absolutely love it. And of course, I, I've half of my family is strong Irish heritage, so. I've always had a strong pull to sort of that. I mean, I grew up in the house, along with all the other stuff that I've talked about, 
my dad playing Chieftain's records all the time. So, yeah. Um, but this album is magnificent. It's it's heavy when it needs to be. Her voice is one of the best for me. It is easily one of the best in metal, no doubt about it. The songs have big hooks. They're gorgeous. They have emotion. Um, there's a song on here called Insomnia, which... Now, this album was only released in 2019, and Insomnia has really worked its way up and to be one of my all-time favourite metal songs. Um, so if there's one song you want to check out, uh, it's called Insomnia. And her voice, the way it goes up and down like it does, and the hook that she puts in there. And also she plays the hurdy-gurdy as well, which gives a really interesting sound uh, to their music. But so many great songs on here. The title track is great. Uh, what else is on, great on here? Pain, uh, Death. Incredible. And this is a really good album. Look at this, or the, the packaging anyway. See, it's actually a book. Really like thick stock, lots of pages. And I'm pretty sure, I don't think I've ever actually played this. Yeah, there's like an audio book as the second disc which I don't think I've ever actually played. I'm, I'm so interested in just wanting to listen to the, the CD all the time. But you see see how it is, it's quite thick. It's actually like a book, an actual bound spine book. So yeah. Cellar Darling and The Spell, this is their second album, came out 2019. Progressive metal, um, Gaelic metal, folk metal, all that amazing stuff. Yeah, the song Insomnia, uh, I've listened to very, very much since it came out. How about a little bit of Swedish, straight up heavy metal? A little bit of power metal, I don't really think they are. They, they're, for me, they're just straight up heavy metal. Um, not really speed metal, not really power metal, a little bit of that, but it's straight up Swedish heavy metal. I love Dream Evil. Great band, if you don't know Dream Evil, check them out. They are, they're just one of those bands that kind of everyone would at least like. Not everyone may love, but everyone kind of likes. They just they just get it right. Great choruses, real sort of fist pumping type stuff. This is my favorite album of theirs for sure. Um, Chasing the Dragon is so, so good. The Chosen Ones, absolutely brilliant. Uh, I can't, oh, Heavy Metal Jesus, is there Heavy Metal Jesus on here? I can't remember if it's on here. The, the type on here is, I might be thinking on an, it's on another album of theirs. Yeah, I can't really see. I don't want to spend too long on here. Uh, the Chosen Ones, here we go. I can look in the book. It's a bit easier to look in the book. Sometimes on those typefaces on the, the covers you can't see. Chasing the Dragon is brilliant. So good. So, so good. The Chosen Ones. Losing You is a big sort of ballad sort of stuff. Great song. Yeah, Heavy Metal Jesus, there we are. I couldn't see it because it's on, it's it's put in as a HMJ, but Heavy Metal Jesus. Brilliant, brilliant song. Um, yeah, just a great album. Um, they had another, and there are, well, they've had lots of great albums. Another great album of theirs is The Book of Heavy Metal, which had probably their biggest single uh, the Book of Heavy Metal, really great, catchy, straight up heavy metal. Um, this came out 2002, their debut album, and it's still my favourite overall. Book of Heavy Metal would be pretty close, but this is still my favourite overall. They're still going, but uh, I'm trying to think when their last album was. Uh, I think they've actually got a new album on the way this year, now that I think about that. Yeah, they might do, um, but yeah, great album. I mean, look at that cover art. The album's called Dragon Slayer. So good. So, the underrated prog album. So, I think you all know very much how much I love Camel. I've been tossing up whether to do a rankings or not. I'll just show my discography. The reason is I'm missing about three to four of the last albums. So, the things that they did, the late 80s and the 90s. Uh, I don't have any, so I might still do it, and I can I can still put them in the rankings. I just won't have a physical copy to show. But this is the underrated album of their catalogue that I'm talking about. Probably underrated because a little bit as well, 
a lot of those prog rock bands, people only tend to concentrate on their 70s material. You know, that was the golden age of it. And this came out in 1981, so it probably is kind of off people's radars a little bit. The, the title of the album is called Nude. Uh, and it's a concept album, but not just a concept album. Like, it is an actual proper story in the same way that uh, Operation Mind Crime is, um, Dream Theater, M M Metropolis, uh, Scenes from Memory Part 2. You know, it is an act, uh, Dream Theater, The Astonishing. It's an actual proper story. So, all the songs for. Uh, you know what it's a little bit like? Uh, very, very much so. Not quite as many tracks, but it's very much like Pink Floyd The Wall where it follows a, a person and the story. So it, it's about a man called Hiro Onoda, a Japanese man uh, in, set in 1942, and obviously World War II is starting out. And um, it's about his struggles and what he goes through. He was a, a, a bit of a reclusive, sort of isolated person. He then gets drafted into the war and all the different things. And, and, and all the song titles are hard to do. You know, so there's a song title here called Drafted, there's Beaches, which is about, you know, the attack. And um, that's one of the heavier tracks because it's rocking and it's sort of symbolising war. You've also got um, Beached, which is also one of the more sort of rocking tracks. Uh, Captured, Lies. See, all, all the song titles going in and around that. But there's lots of, lots of beauty in this album. It really is one of the most gorgeous prog rock albums ever made I think it's lots of moments with where the guitars sound just really gorgeous and the soundscapes are wonderful there's a tribal sort of a tribal song with pan pipes called changing places as well um, so a very interesting prog rock album quite quite different in some ways I think to a lot of the 70s prog rock albums and even quite a little bit different to the rest of the camel albums but I love this album very very much it's going to be very hard to do the Camel Ranking video because I love all the Camel albums very much. They don't have a bad album, that's for sure. So yeah, Camel, Nude, 1981. This is their uh, eighth album. And then after this, of course, they did The, the Stationary Traveller, which is an excellent album. Um, one thing that's good about Camel and Stationary Traveller is that uh, a lot of prog rock bands of the 70s and the 80s, they were starting to lose their way and what Camel did quite well is Stationary Traveller is definitely their most accessible album. Um, there's songs on there that you could almost consider sort of pop prog songs, a little bit like what Rush would do later on and other sort of prog bands were doing in that time. But they didn't sell out on the prog. It's still there and it's still a very deep and dark and interesting sort of album. So they didn't just completely sell out and go all 80s pop. Um, yeah, but I will do that camel ranking soon. Maybe I'm putting it off because I know how hard it's going to be. Next up, been listening to this beauty. Love it. You know, if you really twisted my arm and said, which do you like more, The Grand Illusion or Pieces of Eight? I think maybe because I've heard Grand Illusion more over the years, I've listened to it more, maybe subconsciously that means that I like it a little bit more. When I'm asked these things, I always think it's good that you trust your subconscious. If the two are side by side in the rack, what do you just naturally reach for to play? Which one, ever one that is, I think that generally means that you like that more. Yes, I know you can be in a mood for others at times, but over the years, if you were to write down every time you, you picked one, the one that you picked out of the rack the most to play, I think that tends to be your favourite, right? But this is a great album. Probably their, I reckon, probably their heaviest album overall. You know, songs like, uh, we got Renegade, Blue Collar Man, Long Nights, a heavy song, Lords of the Ring, Queen of Spades, the title track. I mean, it's a really good guitar rock and album for Sticks. Um, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant the gatefold yeah. there we go amen brilliant absolutely love sticks love sticks a lot especially the, that area the equinox crystal ball grand illusion pieces of eight uh paradise theater the cornerstone is still pretty good 
yeah, that, that era of sticks is outstanding. And the one much later, I can't remember what it's called now, it was about 99, maybe a little bit later, and that had the big like carrot thing on the cover. I don't have it, but I really like that one of, of the later sticks. There was a whole period in the middle there where I went, no, I don't want anything to do with sticks at all. That's not good, but yeah. Great album, this. Absolutely love it. Next up, great metal from Perth. A one man band that some of you I may have you may have heard me talk about before. When they play live, obviously it's a, a band, but he's a when he records the album, he's a one man band. A man by the name of uh, Louis Rando, part of that Shrapnel record that I've shown a few times. A member of many bands in Perth, quite a famous drummer down in these parts. Uh, and this is his two thousand and fourteen album, Impending Revelation. Absolutely brilliant. I want to say it's his fourth album. I hope I get that right, because otherwise my my friends in Perth are going to grill me about it. But I'm pretty sure it's a fourth album. On the surface, it black metal. He's a black metal project, black metal one man band. But um, quite a few of the album albums have a fair bit of death metal tinge to them as well. This one very much so. Um, so black metal straight up, you'd think, but there is quite a bit of a death metal sound to it. Just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic album. He really is a genius, such a great songwriter. He quite often gets used by all sorts of bands to do session drumming and then if they need a live drummer, sometimes when bands tour, they need a live drummer, he'll get the spot. Absolutely brilliant album. It's called The Fuhrer, so he goes, in this project goes by the name the Fuhrer Louis Rando what a legend and um, thought I'd show a bit of Vader so I am planning on doing a Vader discography that's down the line a little bit but it's it's definitely planned yes Darcy I will do it I promise Darcy six strings nine lives who's been showing a little bit of Vader lately he's been getting into it and I've been sort of taking him by the hand and guiding him through a little bit of it at times as well. Um, one of my favorite death metal bands, one of my favorite bands of all time. I've met uh, Peter, the guy behind Vader, guitarist, vocalist, and uh, this is their debut, came out in 1992, the ultimate incantation. Just doesn't get much better than this as far as death metal goes. This is, you know, the golden era for me of death metal uh, where it really all started getting going is sort of 89 to 94 and uh, this is right in that sweet spot Such a good album Just absolutely amazing Not really much to look at inside but um, Yeah Seen him a couple of times live. I think I've spoken about him before so I won't go into it too much, but just Brilliant one of the best death metal bands on the planet So good you always know what you're gonna get with Vader Just you just know every album they put out is going to be an absolute cracker so there we go that's just what i've been listening to um got a whole lot of things ordered and on the way um haven't been out to the shops for a little bit just really haven't had time i'd, I'd love to um but yeah so that's just what i've been listening to um please check out those two channels that i talked about if you haven't already aaron the metal theologian and darcy six strings nine lives great channels and uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate any of your time you take to watch my channel and comment and, and whatever else. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, catch you all soon.